So today I'm with uh, Jessica. Jessica, how long have you been out here on the streets of Phoenix? Um, about a couple years already. And how did you end up out here on the streets? What happened? Um, I got positive on schizophrenia. So I started um, uh, like hearing voices and things like paranormal things. You got diagnosed with schizophrenia, schizophrenia. two years ago? Yes. And uh, some folks that I talk to, they're going through a drug-induced schizophrenia, right? So they were taking drugs and that caught, that brought the schizophrenia. Is that what happened to you or just it just happened? Uh, some people think it comes from like your DNA that uh, if a family member uh, which I have a uh, grandpa side uh, symptoms of uh, uh, paranormal things, schizophrenia again. Uh, like I call it more like a six cent, like a like a six or seven sense, you know, that we haven't developed, uh, you know, all the way. Okay. So to me, it's um, people see it like crazy or mental. I see it more like a gift or or. or um, like our responsibility that um, sometimes medication from government doesn't let us um, get it all the way and we stay just uh, on a life where we're half and half, you know, like we never get to have complete our gift to, for me it's to help or it's like a spiritual gift. That's how I see it, you know? I don't wanna say that we're crazy or mental. I wanna, I wanna put it like we're special. That's how I wanna put it. That's a good way to put it. What, uh, how does your family feel about you being out here? Um, they're uh, sad and confused, but when I call and explain, it kind of makes sense. Uh, meanwhile, I'm calling and I'm explaining, they understand, but they s start worrying and feeling sad and anxious when I stop communicating, you know? Are you, uh, have they prescribed you any type of medication to help with your schizophrenia? Uh, they have, but like I said, uh, I don't get mad or, or crazy to a point where I'm hurting somebody else or, you know, or I'm having negative thoughts. Uh, it's more like, uh, my trip is more like, a like, uh, like a, like a little dummy girl hallucinating on butterflies. You know what I mean? Like, uh, that's my trip. Like, more like, uh, I see more like uh, positive than negative in my schizophrenic. Um, as positive spirits, you know, like, it's just like a paranormal thing. It all depends if you believe in, uh, like, an afterlife or in different dimensions. And, you know, it's on what you believe. And I do. I believe there's, uh, I, I believe um, energy doesn't die, matter doesn't die. It just changes, like, like the eyes becomes uh, water and then vapor, you know? So I believe that there we do go somewhere else, uh, our energy, at least. Uh, and I believe there's trap energies. So it kind of, it's kind of like a close, um, like a close relationship that you have with all these energies when you have schizophrenic. So, <clears throat> Uh, that's why I'm in the streets because um, at the beginning I couldn't understand. I used to fear what I, you know, I used to fear. But now I'm kind of understanding little by little, you know. Mm. You're more comfortable as the time passes. You're able to deal with it a little bit better, yeah, you think? Yeah, because you relate to people that are in the streets for the same reason. They used to be soldiers. You'll be uh, surprised on how she used to be a teacher. She used to be a lawyer. You know, you'll be surprised on, by reading a book, their life change. And the impact of reading a book, the power of a book, you know? So it's, it's kind of like um, they stay stuck thinking about something in the book and, and they can't go forward. And we stay stuck trying to figure something out. And, and, and that's why I'm on the streets because I, I get um, knowledge of, of what they think, what they see. Um, and there's pretty good people on the streets. Um, like I said, it, it's sad, but at the end of the day, it's just living like at the beginning when there was no homes built, you know, remember? 
when they used to go uh, up and down looking for food. <laughs> That's how it feels like, like at the beginning. And how do you get food? How do you get uh, uh, something to drink? That's so impact. It's crazy how uh, it feels like you have a provider because you are gonna see somebody come and give you a sandwich in the water. And you know, it's, it's, it's the impact that uh, if you don't worry about it, um, it comes to you. Like my grandma said, a bird just lives. They don't worry about bills, about how they're gonna eat tomorrow. They just live. So it's basically like that. Like you just put yourself in God's hands, wherever you believe, and and everything just um, you suffer sometimes, but it's not like not to the point where you're. Um, there's a lot of help in the United States. There's a lot of help thanks to the government. I'm gonna put it like that because they have a lot of help for people that are homeless. They support a lot of a lot of the people that are homeless. Okay, so <clears throat> you like the carefree lifestyle. No bills, no. It's more like, uh, like when you have a routine, your mind's so busy thinking about how am I gonna do it. And it's like you're in a routine that you don't have the time to be like, wait a minute, who am I? What do I really like? What do I really want? Like you know, you don't have the time to sit down and really, really think about what you, what you want. We're always thinking about what we need. How are we gonna provide what we need? Um, sometimes you're rich and, and and you don't need money you need an inner peace or you know so sometimes our routine doesn't let us uh, uh, notice uh, that we're not comfortable we're just there because it's like a routine like you know like it becomes a habit so that's something I could um, notice now that I'm homeless I notice like a few little things I don't want to be homeless forever you know it was just like a little period of time just to kind of figure it out what I really want, you know? So your little period of time has turned into two years. Eventually, what do you want to do in the next three to six months? Like, what are your goals, plans? What does your future look like? Uh, I want to be a... Um, it's basically like I want to have testimony. Um, I always consider myself a leader. Um... And it's kind of like I wanted to have a testimony to, to be able to say the, the truthness and to be able to say, uh, you know, the truth, and not go by other people's um, lives or testimonies. But I wanted to be able to get up there and and um, I want to change the energy, the suffering, the negative, all that. <clears throat> it's like uh, you have energy stuck in your soul. Because when you were a baby or when you were five years old, somebody hurt your feelings and, or, you know, and, and the point is to, to let that go. <clears throat> uh, to not have trauma, you know, it's like, um, we have a lot of little things in our hearts that by time it becomes like a pain, you know, like, a, and we have to let that go. And, um, to, I don't, I think, I believe in dimensions, so I'm going to say... To elevate our energy, I don't know. I believe that um, uh, we're like in a low energy world. So if we all put a little, uh, how do you say, grain of sand, uh, we could change that. And uh, I feel that we're gonna be able to see new colors. You know, like it's weird, but I study that, like how the dogs don't see colors, but we do. So I feel that things are gonna come our way, like download. I don't know how to explain it um, fully. Like new colors, new shapes. Like <laughs> I'm a little crazy, I know. But like I said, mine is not a sad uh, homeless trip, you know. Mine is like a more like ah, you know. But there is sad homeless um, people out there, you know. That I want to be able to sit down and and um, bring them a little bit of positive in their life, you know. You seem very positive. You seem uh, chipper and uh, happy, you know. Uh, <clears throat> how could be more happy? Um, I would like for that to go away. Like, I don't want to hear anything. And if I hear something, I want to be able to help what I hear. Um, I don't know how government fi figure it out, but I got a paper where I had a court. Um, and it says that I hear robotic voices. <laughs> I'm like, damn, they know everything. And um, I was thinking about it, and I'm like, 
well maybe um maybe when i'm listening to it i don't know like the robots from the future or uh, you know how alexa it's very small you could talk to her and she responds so maybe it's that when i'm connected you know to robots okay <laughs> yeah, you know <clears throat> i'm trying to figure it out and i'm very curious about it so uh, either it, it stops in my head so I could continue my normal life or either uh, I don't know <laughs> I don't know what to tell you but <clears throat> so um, a lot of people this area a lot of people do um, use blues counterfeit fentanyl pills do you use those once in a while yeah <clears throat> it's basically uh, I have a lot to say like we would have to sit down and explain you what I figured out about the blues it was a game uh, it's a long story short it connects you to the spiritual world like I said um, and that's why a lot of people overdose and it's like like I'll have to tell you from the basis of my beliefs so you can understand uh, what I'm gonna say because if I just tell you like this you're gonna be like what she's like in Chinese so I would like, like, I would have to explain you from the root of well, like what I believe, like, and why, so you can understand, you know, like what I'm talking about. Got it. I but, might be wrong, but <clears throat> how many do you smoke per day? Mm, from five to ten a day. Wow. They're 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 dangerous, right? You know that they're dangerous, right? People overdose from them. I was gonna tell you that uh, I heard that it's because they smoke a lot. So pretend that you have a medication. If you drink, if you're prescribed to drink only two, and you drink seven, obviously you're gonna overdose. You know. Right. It's the amount that they they're doing. Okay. Either way, just try to stay safe. Be careful consuming that. Uh, I'm gonna say thank you very much for talking to me. Stay safe out here. I know that you're you're happy being out here, but. It's dangerous, right? It is. Not everybody has good intentions out here, mm -hmm. and they want to use people and and, and um, you know do bad things to, to people that are happy out here. So you have to be really careful. You know, you it's like female. you want to balance your happiness. They see you smiling too much. They're like, why is she smiling too much? Right. You exactly. know, like what's funny? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm saying again, thank you very much for talking thank to you me. Too, I day. appreciate it, Jessica. I'm gonna let me hand you this uh, goodie bag that's donated by uh, one of my subscribers. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, socks yep. on point. <laughs> yep, yeah, there's socks and a bunch of goodies in there, right? So uh, those are things that you can use, right? Right. So uh, please stay safe. We'll talk soon, okay? Bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm.